A couple of announcements before we get started. Yeah. Uh, oops. <laughs> Announcement number one. There is a link, the first link that I dropped in the chat um, is for the replay of today's video. So if you wanna get a copy of the replay, I just put up a real quick landing page. Uh, it's just gonna collect your name, your email, and we'll be sure to get it out to you. If you're already one of my students or a club member, there's no need to fill out that form. Um, I am gonna talk a lot about the club today because we've got a continuing ed version of what we're doing today. And I dropped the link there to get into the club. I'll talk later about what that is. You can use promo code SERVE for your first month so that there's no there are no strings. Um, okay, and if everybody can just hit the mute button, I'd super, super appreciate it. So my intention for today is to go over, I am totally geeking out on AI. I never in a million years would have thought that a hippie crunchy girl from New Jersey would get into the whole vibe of AI, but I can't tell you I'm eating it up as fast as the next piece is coming out. And I'm gonna explain why to you. Um, my hope is to give you guys a taste test of what's possible to wet your whistle if we, if I may. and to show you how this could serve you in your practice. Everything I do, all of my intentions as I stand on this platform of staffless practice is to spread joy like wildfire to practices all over the world. And here's why. Because as I work with doctors from every country, you guys from all over the place, we're working with doctors, practitioners, doctors, you name it. We're seeing that people are just flat out miserable in practice. And they're miserable because of three things that are at stake, time, energy, money, right? If we learn to protect our time, to protect our energy and protect our money in an honoring way to not only us, but the people that we serve, we're going to find and discover a whole lot more joy in practice, right? Everybody agree with that? Right. We're in agreement on that. So I'm literally filming a TV show this week in Dallas over two days. We're filming six episodes. It's called the Practice Joy Show, all about spreading joy like wildfire to practices all over all over the world. And then I'm going to share in my at my friend Courtney's seminar all about AI. So you guys are the first people to hear this presentation. I hope you love it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen. But Dr. Jody, you're a crunchy hippie from New Jersey. What the yes. heck? Yes, it is. Um, so um, no, Jim, no. I'm gonna go ahead and mute you out, buddy. Uh, if you're if you are not already on mute, please mute your phone or your computer, whichever you're on. And you should see my PowerPoint. Matt, can you give me a thumbs up if you see my PowerPoint? All right. So what I learned very quickly is if I wanna do all of the things that I wanna do and I wanna get done all of the things that I wanna get done. And you guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear my chiropractor's hat for a minute. I'm a pediatric and prenatal chiropractor of 23 years here in New Jersey. I've served well over 300, 400,000 adjustments in my lifetime. I get a lot done in this world and there aren't enough hours in the day. We all have the same 24 hours. But if I could just get one more hour in the day, maybe I could serve one more client. Maybe I could serve one more practice member. Maybe one more family whose kid needs chiropractic in their life, right? That's the mentality that I'm coming at this with. The catch though, is that I'm, I only have those 24 hours. So I have a couple of choices. Let me just stop sharing for a minute. Anytime I have a task that I want to get done, there are a few things that I can do with that task. There are four. The first thing is I can just do it. And that's my downfall. That's my Achilles heel. I have this tendency to just, do, I just get it done. I get it over with. But I, I do that at the stake of whatever else is in front of me because I don't have the patience to wait and put that on the back burner. So one thing is I just do it. The next thing is I take it off my list because it really doesn't need to be done. The third thing is I delegate it to somebody that I trust who's going to receive it and take really good care of it. And the fourth thing is that I automate it. So my suggestion to you is you go through a typical day in the practice or in your life or at home or whatever it is that you're doing. You write down every single thing that you did that day, including going to the bathroom. I'm talking every single thing. And then you go back to that list and you say, to yourself, could I have really not had to do that? Did I really need to get it done right then and there? Could I have delegated it or could I have automated it? 
this, the stuff that we're going to go over today goes in the automation category. So it's, there's nothing like the human touch on connecting with practice members, but it's not always necessary. And I'm going to show you why. So I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. Okay. So why AI? For a lot of us, what happened is we started practice. I started practice before any of us had a personal computer, let alone a cell phone. And over the course of 10 years, we watched computers be completely irrelevant in the common household to computers being the center of the common household. And what happened is our practices had to acclimate. And what I'm learning now working with so many doctors from all over the world is that people either leaned into it or people leaned away from it. People either leaned into the computer boom or people leaned away from the computer boom. Thank God. I think I'm saying that at this moment. Thank God I leaned into it. I leaned into it. And what I found is the speed of computers moves just about as fast as my brain does. So I, it really resonated with me to learn all of these programs and truly match the right programs for what I was creating at that time in my practice career. It has a, it was only three years ago that I started this whole staffless practice thing. Up until then, my jam was babies and babies all day long. Like my whole focus in life was to be the best chiropractor possible. Still my focus, but there's a whole lot more going on in, on this side of the screen. So we see all kinds of consequences to that boom. One of the consequences is there's a whole uh, family or circle of practitioners who says, not I, never. I will never lean into that. It's too overwhelming. I, I can't do it. My brain doesn't work that fast. I grew grew up with pen to paper and that's how that's my style and I'm going to keep it that way. Thank you very much. There's a whole group of kids who are growing up now who grew up on the computer boom. They don't have cervical curves and there's all kinds of anatomical physiological effects to that from looking down all day. Like the whole area of this part of their body is affected by that. Their whole spine for that matter, right? A lot of them can't focus on one thing at a time because they're used to focus on 10 screens at a time. That's how their brain was developed. And then me as my 50 year old self, I look at my 13, 14, 15 year old kid and I say just sit still and focus on one thing literally you guys they can't do it unless they grew up in like a different kind of experience like Montessori or Waldorf or homeschooling or whatever it is and then there are people like me and I'm the kind of person who I want to learn as this stuff comes out I want to learn it I want to eat it up I want to integrate it and I want to put it in front of my practice members in a form that is relevant to them. I wanna put it in front of you guys, my colleagues, in a form that is relevant to you. So that's the goal for today. Um, the other thing that I found is when the pandemic hit, this was kind of the birth of Staffles Practice Academy, we saw that practices were losing their staff overnight and it was time to pivot. The, the old way, being in private practice now is so different than being in private practice five years ago. Everybody can relate to that, right? So we had to acclimate to that too, all of these things that we need to acclimate to. And I wanna go into how this stuff is gonna help you do so. Okay, so the playing field has definitely changed. Um, the interesting thing about using a program like ChatGPT, and I'll explain what that is in a few minutes, is there are no ads, there's no interference. It's kind of like how you feel after a great adjustment going into the world of ChatGPT. It just gives you what you're looking for at the click of a button. There's no, you don't have to weave through it. Like if you do a search on Google, you have to weave through the stuff that's not relevant. You got to weave through the stuff that is relevant. Now with something like ChatGPT, you literally have your own robot on the computer, on your phone, that does exactly what you need it to do. Here's the catch though. For ChatGPT, it's only going to do what you want it to do with words. It uses emojis, it uses words. It's not going to use images for you, but we're going to show you a solution for images today too. Okay. 
So this is what we call technology adaptation life cycle. This might look familiar if you're a chiropractor. We've got, we love life cycles, right? So we are definitely in the early market of, of AI. We're definitely still learning. Everybody's coming out with their own version of it. So I'm telling you right now, if you if follow my lead and suck up all the stuff that I'm dishing out right now, you're going to sit at your Thanksgiving dinner table with the teenagers who show up and you're going to knock the bombas right off of their feet because you're going to be dropping words like adaptation life cycle of technology. You're going to be saying things like chat GPT. You're going to be talking about all of the next level AI pieces that are moving around. Those are the things that I want to put out for you. So if you're one of the people who is in the, um, the, the group of practitioners who said, that's not for me. I'll come back to it when it feels more relevant. I'm going to tell you right now that you're probably already using AI. Here are some examples. If you have a phone that opens up and looks at your face ID, you're using AI. If you use spell check on your computer, you're using AI. If you if you wait at the traffic light and to cross the street and you don't have to press a button, you're using AI. If you're using some kind of a mapping device on your phone in your car, you're using AI. Social media, it's kind of creepy now. Like sometimes I feel like all I have to do is think about turkeys at Thanksgiving. Guess what's going to show up on my feed today? I'm going to see all kinds of advertisements for turkey for at Thanksgiving. But what's starting to happen is I feel like all I have to do is think about it and it will start to pop up. I don't know if it's because like when you see red, when you're looking for red, all you see is red. I'm not sure how that quite works. I think that there were a lot of pieces that were implemented and you guys, we could totally go down that rabbit hole to kind of track where the eyes go and wherever it is that the eyes go, that's gonna be the advertisement that's put in front of you too. All of that is AI, okay? Here's the thing though, AI is not going to replace the human connection. The human connection is more relevant than anything else when it comes to running a private practice, let alone when it comes to running a business, right? If you run a practice, you own a business. I know that that's an obvious thing to many of us, but some of us are like, I'm not in it for the business. I'm not in it for the money. But if you own a practice, you are a business person. There is a business component to the practice, time, energy, money, right? So the one of the most important roles of a busy practice and there are a couple of my clients are on here today who have 10 plus people working for them one of the most important roles in that practice is what we call your warm chocolate chip cookie your warm chocolate chip cookie her job his job their job is to sit behind your front desk or in front of your front desk or by your front door or maybe even outside of your front door and welcome people when you walk into the ritz carlton what's the first thing you see Somebody is standing at the door ready in with white gloves on, ready to open up that door and welcome you into the Ritz Carlton. Some of us in practice need that. Right now I'm, um, I'm dancing with a group of doctors in uh, the Netherlands and there is a language barrier. And the language barrier is a lot of these doctors speak English, but their, their practice members don't. So they're gonna need somebody physically in the office to create a language solution, right? So I say to them, well, why not match it with a warm chocolate chip cookie? Why not find somebody who loves people, who loves nurturing, who loves supporting, and is really good with both languages, right? So that can't be replaced by AI. You get that, right? The other thing that can't be replaced by AI is a concept that I'm gonna share with you. You guys, this is really good, so please pay attention to this part. If you, I'm actually gonna show you, let me, let me explain it first and then I'll show you. Let's say you wanna understand what your practice members are looking for. Let's say that you wanna improve your marketing efforts by 10% this year. The best, one of the best things that you can do is go on Amazon and look at the books that are being sold that represent what you do for your practice members. So if the books that are being sold that represent what I'm doing for my staffless practice clients, I would look at books like The, um, the Dummy's Guide to Running a Great uh, Private Practice. I would look at a book like um, How to 
run a private practice um, in five easy steps. I would look at a book like um, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I would look at all of my mentors books because the, this is how I get into the minds and in the hearts of the people who I'm speaking to in all of my marketing efforts. If it was regarding my private practice, and again, babies and bellies all day long, I would be looking at books like um, women's women's bodies, women's wisdom, uh, how to prepare for your first baby, like books like that. And then what I do is I'm going to go over to the review sections of those books. And I'm going to look at all of the things that people are saying sucked about the book. And I'm going to look at all of the things that people are saying were awesome about that book. What that's going to give me is a list of what people are looking for and what people are not looking for. Do you guys get it? This is something that AI cannot do for you. You can take all of the words and the reviews and dump it into AI, but you need your brain. You need the creative experience of being a human being on the planet to think outside of the box, to use some kind of system like this. So I, I'm telling you before we get into all of this, there are exceptions to the rule every step of the way. You know, the goal is when you, when your best friend picks you up from the airport and you've had a really long flight, and you get the luggage in the car and you're so grateful that your best friend picked you up. You're exhausted, right? You get in the car, you shut the door, your best friend looks at you. What's the first question that they ask you? How was your flight? Every time, right? All over the world, people are asking that question. How was your flight? How was your flight? So what's the one question that people are going to ask when they step out of your office? You have the ability to cater and nurture that answer. You can't do that with AI. Okay, I think I, I brought my point home. So, oh, by the way, I wanted to just drop you guys a copy of my book, Staffless. Um, if you just, if you hold your camera open to this picture here, this is called a QR code, open your camera on your smartphone, point it at the heart on the screen, it'll take you to a page that'll give you a free copy of my book, Staffless. And it also gives you the sound file. So I hope you love that experience, okay? I'm gonna just give you guys another minute to grab that. Okay, so let's define some of these terms that we're about to talk about. OpenAI is a private research laboratory that aims to develop and direct artificial intelligence. It's actually a lab. It will direct it in ways that benefit humanity as a whole. That's what they're telling us. That's the song that they're singing. Open AI encourages collaboration and open dialogue, allowing for the development of more transparent AI systems. In short, what that means is that open AI gives us a platform to having a conversation with a computerized program. One of, the one of the languages in which we can have that conversation is a program called ChatGPT. If you can't remember the letters, I always think of PTs, physical therapists, ChatGPT. For like 10 days, I was rocking around my house like, hey, I'm doing ChatGTP. And my son's like, it's not PT, TP, Jody, it's PT, right? So when you type into a program like ChatGPT, and I'm gonna show you guys how this all works. There's such a thing as a prompt, okay? A prompt is the words that you give the chat bot to best give you back the answer that you're looking for. And I just put Jody terms on this. There's a no prompt, there's a not so much prompt, there's a good prompt, and there's a great prompt. So an example would be a nope prompt would be, write me a Facebook ad on back pain. It's not clear enough. It doesn't give enough direction. It doesn't give enough detail. A not so much prompt is going to be something like, write me a 500 word Facebook ad on back pain without emojis. A little bit more detail. It's, eh, it's okay. A good prompt is going to be, write me a 500 word Facebook ad talking to women who are looking to feel better with their back pain after pregnancy. You guys get the detail there, right? And then a great prompt is going to look like, 
you're a direct response copywriter who specializes in writing Facebook ads. Write me a 500 word Facebook ad talking to women who are looking to get rid of back pain after pregnancy. End with a call to action to join my free practice Facebook community. And then you would type in your Facebook community and we're gonna play with this in a minute. So to better understand what a prompt is, you want to you want to be as clear as possible. Picture um picture a robot that is like black and white and doesn't have a pretty pink dress on and has no personality about it, right? That's a bad prompt. If you picture a robot that has like a cute pink dress on and polka dotted shoes and a baseball cap and is holding a flag that says, "Yeah, let's go." That's a good prompt. That's a prompt that's going to give you direction. So the next thing I want to do is I want to get into chat GPT and I want to show you how all of this comes together. Just give me a minute here. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> so this is chat GPT. If you are going into the process of downloading chat GPT for yourself, you want to get chat GPT for it's the most relevant, and you guys, this is moving as, as fast as you get it and you get used to it, it's changing. It's kind of like um, the, the promise of motherhood is as soon as you figure it out, it changes. It's true with AI too, <laughs> right? So let's say that, let's give it a bad prompt. So a bad prompt would be, um, write me a post for a Facebook group for moms in their 30s. And I'm going to hit enter. And you'll see that when whenever it is a Facebook post that you're looking for, it's going to put emojis in it. So if you don't want emojis, you're going to have to say without emojis. Pretty cool, right? And obviously, like the warm chocolate chip cookie, you have to go back to this, you guys, and you have to make it your own language. You also want to fact check if you're asking ChatGPT to give you references. So let's make this a little bit better. Let's say, uh, now take out all emojis. Emojis and put bullet points in. Cool, right? So that would be a Facebook a Facebook post. Let's say, um, write me a letter to a referring pediatrician from a chiropractor about my findings on Sally from her um, chiropractic exam today. It's a little creepy, I'm not gonna lie. It's a little creepy, but can you imagine the time that this could save you? That this will save you, right? Let's go to another one. Um, and then let's say that for this person, let me go to a different one. Cause this one you have to actually fill in the blanks, which I think is great that it gives you the opportunity to fill it in. It doesn't make it up for you. Uh, create a template for note taking. Note taking is probably the biggest Achilles heel for all of my clients, for note taking for a busy chiropractor. And then obviously you make this relevant to where you are in the world and what you need to have included in a note. Okay, so if you guys can, in the chat, give me some examples of things that you want me to ask this bot about. Uh, one of the other ways that you can do it, you guys, is you can say something like, let's say you're working on building your website and you want to have directions typed out, but you also want to have a map. So I'm going to say, this is cool, um, give, me, give me directions to 16 Lee Street in Clinton, New Jersey from all four directions.
there's no looking it up. <laughs> it's just typing it out for me. And this is the kind of thing, like I get the personal experience, but do I need the personal experience when directions are being created for me? Okay. And this program costs about $20 a month. Um, let me just give you one more example. I'm going to say now add emojis. So cute. Emojis are the only images chat GPT will create for you. Show me an email to promote our chiropractic retreat in Jamaica. Yes, he takes chiropractors to Jamaica. <laughs> okay, so um, create a, do you want it to be a Facebook post or a letter, an email? Give me more, Matt. Do a Facebook post, create a Facebook. Okay, so this is when we go from naked robot to robot who's dressed up with the polka dot shoes on. You want a Facebook post, uh, sorry, hold on. Create a Facebook post for chiropractors, female or male? Uh, male and female who are considering a second career and need a vacation in Jamaica um J A M I don't there we go that's actually right why is that why is that uh auto spell checked Jamaica if it's spelled right that drives me crazy that's that's AI right so create a Facebook post for chiropractors to take them on an all inclusive trip to um a five star resort resort with yoga and meditation <laughs> the other thing that you can do this is how you can use this with your notes okay this is where my brain has gone so far and let me also, let me say a couple of things. The first thing that is that this is just an intro class. This is just scratching the surface. We're doing a part one, a part two, and a part three inside of our club this fall. If you want access to that, you're going to see the link and maybe Shona, if you can go up to the top and drop the link again, get access in the club. The club has content on every aspect of practice and it's $89 a month. And we do group coaching every week. Your first month is free. If you use the promo code serve and Shona is going to drop the link. So you can take your notes and you can talk your notes into the phone, into Otter. Don't use the patient name, please. You can say for patient number five, six, three, two, as long as it's coded, per your practice coding system. And again, you have to run this by your compliance person to make sure it's legit where you are, okay? Don't be silly about this. And you can say, okay, um, Otter, right? Today I found a subluxation at C2 and there was a muscle spasm of the SCM on the right at a five out of 10 and the other, and patient seems rather stressed out about it. And there's an edemic, an edemic effect to the tissue and blah, blah, blah. And you go on and on and you talk your notes into Otter. Then you can have a VA or a team member take that chunk of information, drop it into chat GPT to write up the perfect soap note. That's how you would use this with notes. And it would probably take th three minutes per note. Okay. Um, it wants to see, it wants a capital letter. I'm not seeing it shown up to everybody. Uh, oh, here you guys. Okay. Let me just go back. Show me an email to put, right. We did that. I'm on a phone. Can you send the QR code? Sure. Sherry, if you just get into, um, the replay link, I'm going to drop that up here. Um, this, what I'm dropping in the chat right now is a link to our replay. If you want a copy of today 
And then this is for uh, to get into the club. Okay. Who else wants an example with ChatGPT? And then I'm going to show you how to create presentations. Anybody else have an idea for an example? Go for it, Karen. Karen, you can just unmute yourself. Hi, Bill. <laughs> Hello. Hi. What you got? Um, what's some good words to use for a letter of introdu introduction to a PI attorney? So give me more information. Like what what kind do you want to meet them in person? Yes, meet them in person. I just realized that um, an attorney not too far away from me is a personal injury. So write me a letter to act as an introduction to a personal injury attorney from a chiropractor. What do you want them to know about you? That I'm currently accepting new patients. Um, but I offer, you know, the, the, the basic care for personal. So those are all of the details that you're going to give the chat to dress okay. it up in polka dot, right? Okay. So, um, I take care of auto accident victims. Um, and I have been in practice for 20 years. Um, let's leave that typo and see if it repeats the typo or doesn't get the word. What else do you want? To, uh, where are you located? I am located down the street. <laughs> down the street at um, 4 Main Street in um, uh, New York City. And then I just want to show you guys too. So as that's populating, you can hit command command on your keyboard to just talk into your computer. If you don't want to type all this stuff up. Um, you, if you don't have an Apple computer, just find out how you do it on your end. But on my computer, it's command command. So do you see the letter here? Yes. How much time would that save you? A ton. And what could you do instead of writing this letter with that time? <laughs> it's endless what I could do. Get it's endless. Done, focus on patient. Right. You can also do the kind of thing like um, create a list of P personal, uh, personal injury attorneys in New York City. Not able to give me up-to-date information. That's interesting, isn't it? Do you guys know that if you go to Google and you type something like, uh, if I just type in the words, create a list, it will show you what people today are typing in to create a list about, right? So that's AI. If you wanted the way that you can use this for your practice is it, let's say that you're a physical therapist. All you need to do is type in, um, how does a physical therapist and see what people are looking for? Here's your marketing plan. If you're a PT, right? They want to know how do you treat vertigo? They want to know, um, how does a figure, how did, how does a fig physical therapist, um, how much do you make in an hour? I don't want to go in that direction. Let's go in a different direction. Um, what does a chiropractor, and I'm just going to say, what does a chiropractor do help with, do for sciatica, treat? What does a chiropractor adjustment do? Uh, what does a chiropractor actuator do? You get what they're doing there, right? They're, they're wanting to write activator, but they're thinking it's called an actuator. That's so common that it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you could take, um, watch this. You could take what, uh, let me go back to AI. Let me, uh, hold on a second. Okay. You could take that and you could say, create a um, uh, Facebook post 
on chiropractic activators and their benefits. Is that crazy? So the human being part of it is going and looking at what people are asking about when it comes to chiropractic activators. And you guys have to fact check this, especially to honor the people who are the leaders and spending time, energy, and money on educating people how to properly use an activator. You have to fact check it. So I might say, I might go back to Google and I might say, let me just go to google.com. Okay, I might say something like, um, I wanna go to recipes in a minute, I'm gonna go back there. I might say something like, uh, the latest trends for a mom, what? What do moms wanna, a mother, I'm gonna say mother. No, let me reward that. What does a mother do to her family for her child, a mother dog teach her puppies. What does a mother do for the family? What does a mother do for the baby? And then I can take, what does the mother do for her baby? And I can go back to chat GPT, write an article of the top 10 things a new mom will do for her baby. It goes on and on and on. Anything to do with words, anything to organize words, display words, create words, that's what ChatGPT does. You can have it on your phone, you can have it on any screen, and it's $20 a month. Okay, so if you have a blog, it looks like this, you guys. So again, we're all about protecting time, energy, money. If you have a blog post that you need to do every week, and you can have a virtual assistant do this. You can have a team member do this, right? Please, I'm gonna beg of you guys, please do not have a team member who does not love what you do creating content for you because their lack of love in what you do will come across in the content. If you have a team member who does not love what you do, totally cool if that's your jam. Have them do a component of the practice needs that doesn't reflect the, the front face of your practice. This is the stuff that is going to be in front of your warm leads, your warm audience, the people who are thinking about texting you to come in as a new practice member. It needs to be done and read and proofread from someone who loves what you're doing. Please understand that. If you're hiring somebody for $10 an hour across seas, they still need to understand why what you do is the next best, best thing to slice bread. They have to get it. And if they don't get it, like my, one of my coaches, she makes maybe $3 million a year, right? And she does all of her own bookkeeping. And I said to her yesterday, why do you do your bookkeeping? Why don't you delegate that? Because I was just curious. I, it was a, by the way, like, by the way, when I look at my books, I'm doing this, this, and this. And I said to her, why are you doing your bookkeeping? And she said, because I haven't found somebody who loves my business as much as I do to touch my money. So the pieces of your company that are crucial to growing and blossoming and nurturing the company, they have to be done by people who love you and love what you're doing, what we call drinking the Kool-Aid. Okay. Um... I put two links in you guys. I put one link for the replay. That's the staffletspracticetime.ck.page. And I put one in to become a member of the club. Use promo code serve to get your first month free. Okay. Um, who else wants me to play in chat GPT with an idea before I go on to creating presentations? You guys, my brother's on the call. I'm just going to say. Hi, brother. I'm not going to say who it is because it'll embarrass him. <laughs> Can you share more about the blog? Sure. So the reason that we use blogs in the staffless practice world is 
I have one goal with all of the people who are learning about what we're doing. It's to get them into our playground. Our playground lives on Facebook. So everything I do, I the message that I want to hear back to me to know that I'm doing my job well is Jody, I see you everywhere. Right? So some people love to read, some people love to watch, some people love to listen. Everything I give people in practice to learn more about staffless practice and all the crazy stuff that we're up to, I need to hit the people who love to read, the people who love to listen, and the people who love to watch. So a blog is a great way to get all of those three things in. The rule of thumb is a text is a by the way, like a by the way comment, by the way, I'm running five minutes late. No more than that in a text. Never give health advice in a text. Never talk about money in a text. An email is content. These are the written out directions to get to my office, Sally. The text would be, hey, Sally. Okay, here's how it would go. The text is, hey, Sally, I just sent you directions to the office in the email. Let me know if you didn't get it. Emoji, heart, heart. The email would be, here are the four ways to get to our office. And that's where you ask ChatGP for written out directions right? The blog would be, here's what's so wonderful about the location of our office. So what I would do, Matt, with ChatGPT is I would say, what are the top 15 benefits of having a private practice in Clinton, New Jersey? And that would be a blog post. Write a, let's do it. Ready? Share screen, go here, go here. Okay. Um, write a blog post uh, listing out the top 10 reasons to have a practice in Longmont, Colorado. I know that that's where you are because I just referred somebody to you, Colorado. Um, include family experience and talk to an audience in their 30s. You guys think polka dotted shoes. The more information you give your robot, the more you dress her up, him up, them up, the more information she's gonna spit back at you. That would be your blog post. And then what I would do to back that bus up is I would do a Facebook Live or a YouTube Live going over this list. And I would take that live and I would smack it right in the center for the people who love to watch and listen. This is for the people who love to read. You get it? Okay. Whew. What else do you guys want to see? Is there anything else you want to see? Could chat GPT help me niche down my avatar for a nonprofit? Sure. Hi, Dana. I love you. <laughs> Hi, Jody. Love you too. I love you. So... Tell me a little bit about what you have so far for your niche. Yeah, so um, I'm, I want to serve people uh, who sort of, it's hard to put into words, that's what I'm struggling with, who, who get what just happened over the last couple of years, um, meaning they're looking for health freedom, they're looking for um, help with, challenging, let's just say, iatrogenic cases <laughs> of, of, let's say, um, fallout from having had certain treatments or or lack of either way on either side of the... <laughs> You're doing a really <laughs> good job, Dina. Thanks. <laughs> uh, from having certain procedures and treatments. Yeah. And, you know, of course, if I'm going to be putting this out there to find these people through Facebook ads, of course, I don't want to be banned. So... <laughs> Okay, let's start with the description. And so where I would start with that is I would go for a walk with a puppy and I would talk into your phone, free flow your thoughts. Uh -huh. Take that the, the, an app like Otter will type out all the words as you talk into it. Take those scrambled, mumbled, jumbled words, drop them into chat GPT and say, create a Facebook post for me. So let's just see what it comes up with this. Okay. Help me clarify my niche. There you go. And then I'm going to say something like create 
a Facebook post for this niche, niche, um, giving them an offer to meet with me in a free telehealth. And again, I have to say it, you got to be careful what you offer for free. There are very few things we're allowed to offer for free. I have to say it. Check with your local state, all of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how I would use it. Okay, awesome. I'm looking at this on my phone, so I'll have to do it again on the replay. But you guys just remember, you got you got a robot in her nudies. She's standing there and she is a robot in her nudie. She's got nothing on, right? And then you got her robot with polka dotted shoes. She's got her baseball cap. Let's go team. She's got her dress on. She may even have a bow tie on. She's got pigtails. The more you give your robot to dress it up, the more she's going to give back to you. If you have a naked robot, she's not going to give you a whole lot back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can you make a Facebook post for a retreat for mental health therapists suffering from burnout? Yeah, Tara, I'm just going to copy these words. And you guys should be getting the gist, right? Paste. The best way to come up with the words is just talk. Talk, talk through the idea. There you go. I can't reiterate enough how important it is that you proofread this stuff, that you fact check, because you can say something like, now add five references. References. Re oh, Lord. References. And again, you can do this. Any words that you want to put together, you can do this for. So what we're going to show you in the upcoming seminars on AI is, you ready for it? <laughs> we're going to show you how to take an AI bot and put it on your website. <laughs> we're going to show you how to create PowerPoint presentations with AI. We're going to show you... Um, we're going to show you how to create a year of ads, like practice building ads using AI. All of these things are in the upcoming seminars that we're going to be offering this fall inside of the club. And the club is free for you to join right now. Then it's $89 a month. Any other questions before I go into the next piece? We're almost done. I have a hard stop at two because I'm flying to Dallas tomorrow to film a TV show. Thank you for clapping for me, Shona. I saw that. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's go into how many of you guys know the program Canva? Okay. Just about everybody, right? Here's another AI. I raise my hand and what happens in Zoom? My hand is raised. That's creepy, right? But it works. It happens every time. There's an intelligence on the computer. So if you're in Canva, and this is one of the things we're going to teach in the, the three-part uh, AI training, you can use Canva to create PowerPoint presentations. I'm still learning the nuances of this. Oh, let me show you one more thing. Uh, let me go over. I want to go over one more concept with you before I get into this. One of the things that we do with our clients is we say to you, we have a 12-week program. And the 12 week program gives you the tools you need to create a texting program for your practice, an email program for your practice, um, change around the physical space of your practice to make everything A compliant, B user friendly, C help yourself as much as possible to your practice members to save you time, energy, and money. So one of the things that we do when we're creating your email space, which is a Google workspace, not only do we brand it, like giving it color and beauty and all of that, but we also create templates for it. The templates could be your welcome email for your new patients. You could very easily create a welcome email for new patients. You guys, the amount of time this would have saved me three years ago. This is all brand new, right? So 
the welcome email, I can certainly talk into a phone and go through all of the things that need to be included in my welcome email, or I can throw it into the chat. So the things that we create templates for in texting would be a quick direction reference to the office, um, a you forgot your glasses on the table, a um, here is a link to your super bill, a these this is this week's hours, you guys, right? Those are the templates that we put into a texting program. You can use a program like ChatGPT to create all of that content. The beauty is that our 12-week program shows you how to do all of it. In fact, we can even do it for you if you need that service. Okay, let me go back to this piece. Any questions so far? Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. So let's say that you were working on creating a PowerPoint presentation for new moms who um, were looking to uh, get their body feeling like um, it's healed well after childbirth. So I'm in Canva right now. I'm in the part of Canva, and this is all part of what we're gonna teach you, <coughs> that creates PowerPoint presentations for you. And I'm gonna use five or more words to describe my presentation. Uh, new moms looking for solutions to heal from childbirth. I looked through so many different kinds of programs that do presentation forms like this. Canva is hands down my favorite. Not only is it gonna give me a bunch of options of what I can use, but it's also matching my brand kit in Canva, which is another thing that we teach you how to do inside of the 12 week program. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this one. I like the way that this looks. Create my presentation. Wouldn't it be funny if it didn't create it? <laughs> but it did. So here's slide one, slide two, slide three. You guys, how much time would this save you? It's crazy, isn't it? The other thing that I wanna show you is one of our partners is called Attractwell. And Attractwell is pretty much like where your landing page meets your email campaigns, meets your, um, your saved replies to practice members, meets your contact management, right? They now have an AI component too. And inside of our AI program, they're going to come and present with us. So lots of stuff coming your way on this stuff. Questions, thoughts, comments, concerns, the floor is open. What do you guys have? Was that helpful? It was helpful. Can I verbalize a concern? Yeah, who is it? It's Dana, easier than typing. Um, so. I have this suspicion, I'm, I'm sort of a conspiracy theorist, but I have this suspicion that a lot of AI is sort of taking everything that's out there, right? And then, and then using it to put back into the world. So how do we protect our intellectual property if we're using AI to create things like either PowerPoints or niching down or whatever? I, I don't know. It's definitely <laughs> something that we're going to bring up in the workshop series. Shona, if you can just make a note of that for me to remember to double click on it. But it's definitely something that we can we can find out about. That would be something that I would probably talk to a privacy attorney about. Mm -hmm. Like somebody who's really done. But you have to remember, Dana, we are in the very beginning of this curve. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is if anything of yours hits the internet, it's fair game. Right. People can copy it left and right and put their name on it. It happens every day in my world. Every day I see something that I have created, twisted up a little bit, renamed and put back out there. And you know what? I've learned to say, what a compliment. Like mm -hmm. if it's something like my book and somebody flat out copied one of my books and put their name on it, I'd probably be frustrated. But for now, I see anything that I create, if I put it out there, it's fair game. I would say though, if you've got proprietary information that's really near and dear to your heart, you definitely wanna have a privacy attorney. Someone just to just look over, it's worth spending the money, it's worth the investment up ahead. Mm -hmm. So I don't okay. know, but I'll find out for you. 
Thank you. Yeah, I have a feeling you can't have it both ways. You probably can't use AI and then keep your stuff private. Denise, what are you going to say? Can you create um, like an, an instructional book from this? Like, can it, will it create books? Uh huh. So give me an example. Um, so I'm a Reiki master practitioner in my wellness center. Um, uh, let's see the benefit, the healing benefits of Reiki and sound therapy. Oh, yum. Wait, let step me by back. step. Here. So the healing benefits of, of Reiki, Reiki and sound therapy, sound with frequency. Go ahead. Therapy with frequencies, with frequencies, frequencies. Um, for with who? Frequencies. So you want to answer for who the sound therapy. Sound therapy with, you know what? Take out with frequencies because that'll confuse it. Um, uh, for who? For um, for my students. For my students, for and what are my, they saying with you? who are studying what? My class. My class, and what is your class on? Um, the healing benefits of Reiki. <laughs> um, for my class, the healing benefits of Reiki and sound therapy. So we went, We want to make this as, we want to dress her up and put okay. her shoes, right? So create- How about for students who are studying my class on becoming a Reiki practitioner? That's the goal. Uh, is- for, for my students who are who studying, are studying on. to become a Reiki practitioner as I train them. Rock star. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, isn't it? Oh, oh my God. Now, obviously you're going to want to go back and make this your own. You want to think about right the more publisher cookie, like what's going to make this personal to their experience with you. So you might want to, and I would say now add um, 10 steps, 10 steps to organize the um, curriculum for my class or something. I don't know. I'm just making this up. Yeah. <laughs> That's it goes amazing. on and on. You can play with this all day long. It goes on and now, on. Now, when when it's done doing this, you have a an option to download as a PDF or a Word doc or you how can, do you save the content? That's a really good question. So you can either take all of this and copy it. It will save all of these. are all the searches I've done in the past couple of days. Oh, okay. Right? Um, so this is in the beginning of the seminar today, I, the first search I had was 30 moms in their thirties. I'm still in that search. So I could go back to this conversation in three weeks from now and everything I did in today's training, cause I never did a new search. So I could rename this search training from uh, August 15th. You get it? Now, the scary thing about this, you guys, is that like, this can write a book for you. This, I can't tell you how much creative flow and intuition and guidance, if you know what I mean, went into writing my books. I think that you can tell the difference. That's why I'm saying to you, if you have a VA who's writing this stuff for you, you have to go back in and proofread it for your language for your voice to be reflected. AI is not going to create your voice. It's going to create the facts. Is that fair? Okay. Um, wow. I know Denise, it's crazy. Ebooks, the sky's the limit in what can be created. I love it most for Facebook uh, posts. 
because it just takes so much time to create the posts over and over and over again. And then to have an organized system like Trello or monday.com to keep all of your posts organized. One of the things that we give you in the club is we give you an entire Facebook group course creator. Um, and this is one of the things that is with the course creator is our chat GPT pieces. Um, okay, so any other questions, Instagram posts too, sure. So Instagram posts, I don't, I'm not really big on Instagram. I wouldn't know a whole lot about it, but we can certainly bring in Miss Molly and have her speak to it. I'm sure that she'll have a lot to say about it. But you know, you guys, like five years ago, I was paying people to post on Facebook for my practice. This will take me three minutes to do. And then I can take that money and I can put it into having a, uh, one of the other roles that we suggest all of our clients hire for is this is a person that needs to be hired, what we call a Casper. It's somebody who comes into your office when you're not there and empties the trash and wipes down the tables and waters the plants and files the files and gets the mail and runs to the bank. Your Casper is doing all of the things to prepare you for the next shift. So that money that you would pay for having somebody create content for Facebook you could apply to a Casper because I guarantee you, independent of what you do, you're sitting on the other side of this computer, taking the trash out is not the best use of your time. I guarantee you. Unless you're a trash taker adder and it's just something that you like to do. It's not something that floats my fancy. Okay, I'm gonna stop recording and then we can all curse afterwards. <laughs>